I also have a Twitch channel. Head on over there for more roleplay advice and other fun stuff. All of these biotypes can coexist within one roleplay. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about biotypes for your roleplay groups. So, when you're setting up your roleplay group, there's essentially three ways you can set up your bios, and every roleplay is going to use some combination of these three. You might just use one, or two, or all three. But you're going to fall into one of these in some way, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to go in the order of the admin or mods having the most control down to the player having the most control. Bio role plays are great where you as the admin need to control the overall history and personality for the characters. For explanations on how to write bios, please see my bio writing video. I'm going to link that up in the card for you guys. If you have not seen it, go check it out. In this type of role play, the admin and the mods and maybe some veteran players will write all of the bios for all of the characters in the role play and then potential players apply for those characters. It's like running a tabletop game where the DM has a stack of character sheets that the players pick from instead of creating their own character. A good example is if you have a canon roleplay where you want certain elements of canon to be adhered to. Let's say you're running a Star Wars roleplay and you want to make sure that Raylo is part of that roleplay. You can write your Rey and your Kylo bios so that they lend themselves to that Raylo aspect and are labeled as such. And that way, people are going to see that and read it, and they're not going to apply thinking that Finray might happen. Or on the opposite side, if you hate Raylo and love Finray, you can write the bios like that. Same thing, just reverse. This is also useful for non-canon roleplays with complicated hierarchies, such as a mob roleplay. The mob family or families have certain people in certain positions, and those positions are filled. So if you have bios for all of the characters, then you know who exactly sits where, regardless of who's actually playing those characters. This makes all of those complex dynamics clear to prospective players, so they know exactly what they're getting into when they apply. This also means that since those bios are all pre-written, if you need to use a character for a certain thing and that character doesn't have a player, you could still use it as an NPC. With bio roleplays, you communicate to the players exactly what you're looking for, and there's no confusion on the characterization or histories that you want in your roleplay. If you want to set up a bio roleplay, you have a lot of upfront work to do, you need to create engaging bios that people are going to want to apply for. The bio should include the character's history and personality and appearance at minimum. And depending on the roleplay, you might want to include other details like gender or age or sexuality or ethnicity if it's not obvious from reading the history of the character. When you create a bio roleplay, the application process should not ask the applicants to write the bio. You've already done that. Instead, ask for a writing sample. I recommend requesting this writing sample be in character. That way, you not only see their prose and technical writing ability, you also see how they might play this character in the roleplay. When you and your mod team are judging the application, then ask yourself, did this player bring out what we wrote in the bio? Do they understand the characterization that we're looking for and they're going to be a good fit for that particular character? The drawback to bio roleplay is, of course, potentially stifling creativity. If you already have a clear idea of what you want, you may miss out on better ideas that your players might bring to the table. Setting up a bio roleplay means players are less likely to flex those creative muscles and bring those ideas to you. Also, players that want more flexibility might not even join. It's more possible in this type of roleplay than in others that you end up with mostly players who want their hands held and won't really push the plot forward without you giving them a little shove in the right direction. For skeleton roleplays, you and the mods create some information about the character and the player is expected to fill in the rest. For example, you may have one single paragraph about the character and the applicants are expected to expand on that paragraph. Or you may only provide the name and appearance and the applicant has to fill in the whole history. The point is, 
You don't provide enough in the skeleton for them to play the character as is. You just provide enough to give them an idea so that they can take that and run with it. This is, of course, a lot less work than a bio roleplay. However, if you have a clear idea in your head of what you're looking for and you're setting up skeletons to save yourself work and hoping that players just guess what you're looking for, then this probably isn't the one to use. For skeleton roleplays, you must be open to change and addition on your ideas. When you set up skeletons, you still need to provide a whole application process. And I have a video about my application tips and that process, I'll link that up in the card, but basically you need the whole thing. You can't just do a writing sample like you can do with bio roleplays. That means your review process is probably going to take longer in this type of roleplay than it does when you're doing a bio roleplay. The drawback here is kind of the opposite to the drawback of the bio roleplays. The applicants might take your idea and run in a different direction than what you were really looking for. For me, this is usually exciting because they can come up with stuff that's way better than what I can come up with because I'm focused on the world as a whole, not the individual characters within it. But this also means you have to let control go. If you can't do this, I recommend doing a bio roleplay instead. In an OC roleplay, you do none of the work when it comes to building the individual characters. Players come to you with their character ideas based solely on your lore book. If you don't have a lore book, check out my lore book video. I'll link that up in the card as well so you can take a look at it. This is the ultimate way to give freedom to your players. They make everything about that character within the parameters that you've set up in your lore book, and that means they're going to bond much more deeply with that character. This also means they're more likely to stick around longer in your roleplay. Same as with the skeleton roleplays, you need a whole application process here, so again, I recommend watching my application video for that. In OC roleplays, you've put in none of the work up front for the individual characters. That means you have to do that work on the back end when you're doing your application review process. For this type of roleplay to be successful, you have to have a really full robust application review process to make sure that what players have created matches your lore book and is something engaging that others will also be interested in roleplaying with. All of these biotypes can coexist within one roleplay. For example, you might have skeletons set up for character ideas, however, players can also make their own OCs and apply to your roleplay with them as well. But let's say then someone joins, roleplays for a few months, and then eventually ends up leaving your roleplay. If that was an established character that you want to try to still have in the roleplay, you might post that whole bio and have people apply with a writing sample for that particular character. Now, roleplays don't really tend to have all three, but that's a way you could do it. Roleplays tend to be bio and OC, skeleton and OC, or purely OC. But think about the roleplay that you're running, the type of player you want to attract, and set up your roleplay to match with those parameters. So what type of roleplays do you run? Are you considering something new now that you've seen these types defined? Or is this something that you've been doing for a while? I'd love to hear about all of your experiences, so let me know down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.